Hey Luke here with CatsAndCarb.com and I'm catching bluegills with mashed potatoes. And I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. And I'm also going to show you how to make an awesome pencil float using nothing more than a straw and a lighter pair of pliers. So at any rate, I'm catching tons of bluegill and they are going nuts for it. I'm going to show you how this works and how you can do it too. Okay, so get yourself a box of instant mashed potatoes from Walmart. It's like $2.70 for this entire box. That would last you a year. This little pile of mashed potato flakes here was like three times more than I needed to catch about 30 to 40 bluegill. Just add a splash of water, very little, just enough to be able to knead it into a dough. And it takes a, a few minutes of kneading and then it sets up. The consistency of your mashed potatoes is really important. If it's too wet, too loose, it'll fall off the hook too quickly. If it's too dry, it'll also fall off the hook too quickly. So you want it where it sticks together really well, but it's, it's firm and solid and makes the as tough of a ball as possible. And you kind of got to play around with the water a little bit till you get it right. And the longer you let it sit out, the kind of drier it gets. So you sometimes you need to adjust it a little bit as you go. But this stuff works fabulously. Oh, they love those mashed potatoes. On this trip, I was going catfishing with my son, Tommy, and we needed about 20 bluegill to go night fishing for catfish. By the time I got home from work, got the boat launched, got my gear rigged up, I only had about an hour and change to catch all of our bait. So one of the first things I did is I needed a float and I wanted a really sensitive pencil float. So I made one using some straws from Chick-fil-A. I basically pinched the end with pliers and seal the end shut with this lighter. Just kind of burn it. Doesn't take much. And uh, there you go. Just give it a few seconds to let it cool and then pop it out of the pliers and do the other end. The first time I ever saw someone use a straw as a float, it was this old man from India and he had a cane pole he'd made himself and he had a little hook he'd made from a pin and he had this straw that he was using as a float and he was just ripping in bluegills one after another and had this big old grin on his face. And I noticed that that float was doing a really fabulous job. So I paid close attention to what he was doing. But you pinch the float, make sure it's pressurized and that tells you it's sealed on both ends and you're good to go. And so then you get rigged up and I use a number 14 hook, a really thin, lightweight fly fishing hook. And the bluegill really have a hard time seeing it. So it, you get a really good hookup ratio with it. And you pierce the bottom of the, the straw um, with that hook and just pull it the rest of the way through. Thread it through the straw. Uh, it may not be airtight anymore, but it doesn't really matter. Once you pull the hook through the straw, tie a couple of overhand knots so that the straw will only travel up the line if you pull it. That way your float won't move around on you. Next, you're gonna want a decent sized split shot to help the float cock. When the float cocks, that means it's sitting vertically in the water. And when you put the mashed potatoes on the hook, you want the smallest ball you can get away with. You just wanna barely cover the point of the hook. The smaller the ball, the better. If it's too big, it'll just fall off the hook. And it does not take very long for those bluegills to hammer it. When you're using a pencil float, you only want about one-fifth of the float to stick out of the water. You want the top of it to just kind of barely poke out. Um, in this case, I had too much straw, so it's really simple. Just clip the end off, pinch it, burn it shut, and you've adjusted the length of your float. Um, super easy way to, to get your float dialed in.
A lot of people ask me how you keep from gut hooking these bluegills, especially when you're using really tiny number 14 hooks. And the key is these pencil floats here, knowing when you get a bite and setting the hook right when you get the bite and not seconds later is the key to not gut hooking these bluegills. And these little pencil floats are really sensitive. They go up and down in the water really easy and then they twitch like this really easy. And so it makes it very sensitive and easy to detect when you got a bite. Additionally, you can get what's called uh, a positive bite. So if you have the floats floating in the water like this and a fish comes along and grabs the bait and lifts it up off the bottom, that'll raise the float up and you'll see that float go whoop, just like that, real nice and kind of this, do this slow little rise. And that's a positive bite and that also tells you you got a fish. Anyone can catch bluegill, it's not that hard. The key though is to catch them quickly. Um, in order to get enough bluegill to go catfishing, I need about 12 to 20 bluegill. And I don't want to spend time catching bluegill, I want to spend time catching monster catfish. So doing it quickly and efficiently is really key. You hit it into a rhythm and you just grab the bluegill, pull them out, throw them in the net. You know, it's, it's all really important. And one of the things that really slows you down is having your bait stolen by missing bites. So having a sensitive float that tells you when you're getting hits so you can set that hook really saves you a lot of time. Look at my basket. My basket fell over and now all my fish are gone. Well today I'm catching bluegill for live bait for catfishing and uh, in order to keep them stored and alive I'm using this uh, basket from Ikea and if you guys watch my videos you've probably seen me do this before but it's really nifty here. It's uh, eight bucks from Ikea and a uh, little collapsible laundry basket like so. You put this down in the water, throw a rock in the bottom of it and you've got a perfect little live well. Keep your fish live forever and you can hold a ton of fish in here. You can put a big old catfish in here, bluegill, whatever you want. Now, the key though is you got to put the rock in the bottom to weigh it down. Um, I didn't do that this time and uh, big old turtles got looking at my fish and got in there and tipped it over and let all my fish out. So I ended up starting over and having to recatch all my bait. So I lost about 12 uh, bluegill that way so lesson learned but as long as you put a big old rock in it works uh, really well not bad for eight bucks when you're catching a lot of bluegill it's not uncommon for things to really slow down after you pull a few of them out the school of fish start to learn that something's up and they all get really gun shy so one of the keys to keep them interested is throwing in chum so i take just a few balls of potatoes and i throw in some freebies uh, after every fish or two that I pull out. So I keep that school of fish right there at my feet. I keep them feeding, I keep them interested because not every pile of potatoes has a hook in it. So chumming and keeping them, keeping that school feeding like that is uh, really good to stay in that rhythm and just pulling out lots of fish really quickly. Yeah. I actually like this bait a lot better than earthworms for a couple of reasons. First off, it's super cheap and it's non-perishable. You just have a little Ziploc bag full of mashed potatoes in your tackle bag, add some water, you're off to the races. You don't have to refrigerate it or worry about it and it's cheap and it's right there. Uh, additionally, you can chum it and that being able to chum it is so important to keeping those fish interested and really keeping things humming along. And the fish just haven't seen it before. And so in this dock, the fish get caught all the time. People are always throwing worms at them. They, they've never seen mashed potatoes before. They're loving this. Um, so I love it. The one downside with mashed potatoes is it really falls off the hook easily. And so it's not very good for casting. It works excellent when you're using like a cane pole or you're just fishing under your rod tip like I am here. But if I were to be casting more than just a, a few yards, I'd be having my, my bait fly off from the force of casting. So it's not very good as a long distance bait. Um, but other than that, I think this is a fabulous, fabulous bluegill bait. Where you set the split shot underneath the float is really important. 
the further down the string you set the split shot, the quicker your bait will sink down to depth. But the higher up you put the split shot, the longer your bait will free fall all through the water column naturally. A lot of hook shy bluegill will only hit the bait as it falls and won't like to hit it as it dangles. You'll get more hits as the bait is falling rather than dangling at depth. If that's the case, put your split shot up high so your bait falls more. If the bluegill are down deep or if they're not as hook shy, put your split shot down lower so that your bait gets to the bluegill quicker. I have a little $3 set of forceps made by Eagle Claw that I keep on a lanyard around my neck. I never go fishing for panfish without it. If you ever get a fish that's uh, deep hooked, pops it out so easy. It works way better than a disgorger. I'm using a 10 foot float rod with a Fluger reel on it, but it was so unnecessary. A little piece of cane, a stick, a little crappie pole, anything would have worked. I don't think I touched my reel hardly the whole day. Um, this is a perfect technique for catching lots of bluegill on a cane pole. Absolutely love it. Well, me and Tommy have had a great time catching loads of fish. And the sun's going down, so we're going to take our bluegill and we're going to go catch ourselves some big, fat catfish. All right, Tom, you ready? Yeah! Yeah! Uh, not too bad, it's because here we lost about 12 of them. Yeah. Hopefully you like this video. Check out some of our other great videos including how to catch catfish with bluegill and how to catch a load of bluegill using Slim Jims. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe for new videos every week. Thanks for watching.